Hey guys, welcome back to Topher Drives and welcome to the 2023 Cadillac CT4 Premium Luxury with Super Cruise. Today's gonna be a short video. I just wanted to take you guys out on the highway, show you what it's like to operate and sit in this Cadillac while running Super Cruise. It's a super cool thing. And honestly, I think Super Cruise is my favorite driver aid right now on the market um, as far as a lane keep, a lane departure, um, something that essentially drives the car for you. And you'll see that here in just about five minutes once we hop on to the highway. But first, let's do a walk around of this Cadillac CT4 just so you can kind of see what it looks like from the outside before we hit the road. I was debating filming a video on this car, but I thought, well, I have it. Why not show you all what Super Cruise is like? This car is finished in midnight steel metallic. When I was reading the Monroney before this car showed up, I was a little bit skeptical because I'm like, oh, it's just going to be like any other basic silver. But Cadillac has knocked it out of the park with this color. I love the way it looks with the silver wheels and overall a pleasant surprise when this car showed up. The only thing it's missing is a different colored interior. I don't love the black interior with this spec. I think it could use either a beige or a brown, which both of which are available with the CT4, which is nice. This car has uh, the typical multitude of Cadillac badging on the back, CT4, all wheel drive, 500T. And if you don't know what this means, it means that it makes 500 Newton meters of torque and the T I believe stands for turbocharged. I don't know why they feel the need to give us all of those badges. Here's inside the trunk if you were curious. Pretty decent size. Show you in the back seat. Pretty standard black interior. Not a ton of room back here um, to the point where I don't even want to sit back there because it is very, very cramped. Now, before we get on the road, let me just show you one last thing. One other option that this car has that does not come standard on just the premium luxury CT4. And that is the 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder with 310 horsepower. Standard, you only get the two liter. And this is basically, well it is, it is the motor that you get in the CT4 V, uh, but it makes 15 more horsepower in that configuration. So if you want to have the CT4 V performance without all the weird CT4 V badges and confusing having to explain to people, well, yeah, I've got a CT4 V, but it's not the black wing, whatever. You don't have to go through any of that if you just have the premium luxury with the 2.7. So that's probably what I would do. As spec, this car's about 53 grand. We'll grab the Monroney and just go through all of the options here. Super Cruise is not standard on the CT4. You do have to option it on, and it is a $7,700 package for this Super Cruise 2. Uh, you can see all of the things that it comes with here. The 2.7 liter, that's a $2,500 option. All wheel drive, that's a $2,000 option. So we have quite the amount of options here, $12,840 in options. And like I said, that all comes out to about 53 grand. They still make this thing in Michigan, Lansing, about an hour north from here. So not too far from where this thing was built. 16% of the parts content is made in China though. So don't know what sort of parts in here are from China. Comment below if you do know. <laughs> Black headliner, um, I mean really not too much in here. The CT4 is a pretty simple car, so I think it's cool that you can actually get it with Super Cruise now. Back in the day, you could only get it on the CT6, but of course that car no longer exists, so it's cool that Cadillac has expanded it to the rest of their lineup here uh, with the CT4, CT5, Escalade, and whatever other cars you can get it in. Um, cool, all right, well, let's go ahead and get out on the road. I'll show you guys how Super Cruise works in this thing. And that'll probably be just about it today. We'll talk about the car a little bit, but we'll have review. Uh, we'll have a review on Daily Motor, and there'll be a drive as well on Winding Road Magazine. I don't know if the Topher will end up getting this car. He probably will at some point. But uh, of course, as always, make sure you check out the other channels if you want to see more on this car, because we will have all of that there for you. Speaking of the Topher, we're out in his neck of the woods. This is where he films a lot of his videos. Decent power from this 2.7. Actually, I say decent, it does actually feel like quite a bit here in this car. It's quite a tiny thing. We'll run sport mode for just a second as we're merging onto the expressway here, and then we'll go right into Super Cruise. Auto 
automatically puts you into performance shift, which is something that GM cars do with automatics when they sense that you are driving spiritedly. All right, let's get ourselves back into my mode, which is just soft everything. And let me show you how simple this is to activate Super Cruise. All you do is hit this button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, and that's it. We are now Super Cruising, and I think that that's a VinFast in front of us, perhaps? Cool, so we've got this set to 72 miles per hour, and the car is automatically changing lanes here to the left to pass said VinFast. We can adjust our speed over here on the left-hand side as well with this dial go up individually or a full click that'll put you up in increments of five. That is a VinFast, check that out. It's the car from Vietnam. Okay, anyways, so we'll hang out here and all you have to do with Super Cruise is sit here and look at the road. Um, if you have your phone out or if you're looking somewhere else, playing with your screen, whatever, it'll yell at you to pay attention and eventually it will deactivate. So you do have to sit here and watch the road, but that's it. They make it pretty dang simple in this car. We had a Silverado High Country that had Super Cruise last year, and after spending some time in that car, I kind of came to the conclusion that this is really my favorite driver aids. This isn't full self-driving. Um, you know, it'll keep you here on the highway, but Super Cruise will only work on highways that it knows. So if I get off the highway right now, and I'm on some side road, and I try to activate Super Cruise, it won't work. It's only gonna work on a highway that it has programmed in its brain that it already knows what the highway looks like, everything about it. That's the only place it's gonna work. So not full self-driving, it's not like a Tesla where you can get off the highway and it'll still continue to drive for you. But I think in kind of just a very common vehicle like this, oh, let's see how it handles this now. We've got a car up here with its hazards on. So it should want to take me around this car now. Should want to stick me into the left lane here, but it's not going to want to cut anybody off while it does so. All right, we got a lot of people going around us. Let's see if, if it doesn't do it itself after this car, we'll go ahead and uh, manually input a lane change for it. Yeah, we got to wait for this other car now to come around. We'll go ahead and let it know that we want to change lanes and we'll wait for an opportunity to do so. We've got some more traffic coming up, so it's not gonna do it quite yet. We've got a big line of traffic coming, so it is gonna have to wait a second. Of course, something like this is a slight disadvantage to something like Super Cruise, but you can take control at any time. If I wanted to, I could have just steered the car over and gone around, but I'm just curious to see how this thing handles. Ooh, it's, there's a semi coming, but it's gonna, ooh, it's gonna still get over and go in front of the semi, interesting, okay turn our signal off there. Interesting that it waited for a semi to come up to get in front of, but whatever. All right, getting back up to our set speed here. As long as you got some green here at the top of the steering wheel, it will continue to go. That's how you know that it is doing the thing. All right, we got a car getting in front of us here. Just like adaptive cruise, you know, of course it'll adapt, give you a little bit more distance uh, behind a car that decides that it wants to get in front of you. I don't particularly like just driving in the left lane, of course, I like to be a civilized human and drive in the right lane unless I'm passing. I don't know that this car, once it passes, if it knows to then get back over to the right. I think the Silverado used to do that, or it did do that when we had it. But as you can see here, it's a super, easy system. I mean, there's nothing to it. You just hit the button and go. And it, it, it'll, it'll drive across the country if you want, as long as it knows the highways, which I'm sure all major highways in the U.S. it does. We're on M14 right now, which is a Michigan highway, M Michigan, and it knows this just fine. Though I'd hope it would know all the Michigan highways since it was built here. And overall comfort in the CT4, it's pretty good of course, being the smallest sedan from Cadillac, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it gets the job done. When you're in your comfort drive mode or my mode, I've got everything set to comfort or tour mode. It's pretty cozy, but everything will firm up quite a bit in sport. Oh man, 
yeah, this is the life here. I do enjoy Super Cruise quite a bit. And there's nothing really we can do here. Big line of cars in the left because we are going to go... We'll have to take uh, control for a second because we're getting off here in 0.3 of a mile. It's very easy to take back control. You can either click this button and go back to regular cruise control. It'll flash right at you, tell you to take control. Or even easier, you tap the brake and that's it. So you either tap the brake or you can cancel it out on the steering wheel. Super easy either way. Again, nothing to it. GM makes this super easy. And if you try to get it to go here, it'll say unavailable because it doesn't want to uh, ride out this exit ramp. I'm sure it could if it wanted to, but for legal reasons, they probably don't want it to do something this complex, even though this isn't very complex, but whatever. Okay. So we'll go ahead and merge back on here. We'll set our super cruise again. You guys can see how easy it is to just, oh, okay, lane ending, whatever. Let's actually start over here in the right lane and we'll uh, let it do some more lane changes itself. All right, see we've got our green bar on the steering wheel and it is set to super cruise. The only disadvantage I can think of with a system like this is what you just saw with that exit ramp because in some cars that don't have super cruise that just have more of a lane keep assist feature some of them will do corners that were as drastic as the exit ramp that i just took for example i think a kia or a hyundai or a genesis i think it probably would have taken that corner with the automatic steering with the lane keep assist um, so that's really the only disadvantage i can think of with super cruise is that the only time you're going to get that steering is if the car knows where it's at all right, we're going for a lane change now to get around this semi. No abrupt lane changes or anything. It does a real good job. It takes its time getting over. What I would like to do is adjust my distance. So you can adjust your gap here for how far away you want to be from the car in front of you. I usually like to leave mine on the closest just because you can see how far we are from this Ford Maverick in front of us. We still have quite a bit of distance. Well, the car in front of them is braking, so we'll be slowing up a bit. Okay. Ah, well, I'm sure some people will get creative with how to actually beat the system and be able to do other things while you're driving, but it's got little, which you all can actually see on camera, there's little scanners right here that watch your eyeballs to make sure you're looking at the road. There might be one here as well. I'm not positive on that. But the car is watching you at all times to make sure that your eyes are on the road and you're not doing something that you shouldn't be doing while driving, which I suppose could be looked at as another disadvantage to Super Cruise because on other lane keep assist systems, you can look wherever you want, whatever, the car will continue to drive, but you do have to give input to the steering wheel. Ooh, we are stopping braking the car is handling it very good um, with other systems usually all you have to do is touch the steering wheel remind the car that you're alive that you that you're still here with super cruise you don't have to do that you never have to touch the steering wheel so there's usually two different types of systems the ones that ones that read your eyes and ones that need an input for the steering wheel and obviously like I said at the beginning of this video I definitely prefer ones like this that just take take less work I don't have to touch the steering wheel I can just sit here and well, do nothing. The Bose sound system in this car is pretty decent. And sit here, listen to some music, and enjoy the drive. And you know, I think I'm to the level now with Super Cruise where I trust it. I'm not worried about it rear-ending the car in front of me or driving into a guardrail or anything. I think this system has been around for long enough. I've experienced enough of it to where I do actually really trust it now. And we've got some flashing here. The green light is flashing. Oh, and Super Cruise is disengaging. Okay, so here's an issue also that I've run into. I think what I think this is, is I've got a camera on my head, which will sometimes confuse the system. So right there, it just made me take back over control. But there was also the sun was in my eyes there. So it could have been something with the sun and the camera and whatever else. I've had absolutely no issues with this when I've not been wearing a camera on my face. But sometimes that does kind of intervene with the Super Cruise a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to reactivate here. Yep, okay, cool. Probably just the, the lighting and whatever else made it freak out. 
Okay, well, that's just about gonna wrap it up for us today, guys. I don't wanna keep you too long, but I definitely wanted to show you what Super Cruise is like on this new CT4. This is pretty consistent across the Cadillac and Chevrolet lineup. The only one that's a little different is the Chevy Bolt. You're able to get that with the Bolt EUV. You can get it with Super Cruise. It's not as good of a system uh, as you get in these higher end GM products. It'll still do the job, but the Super Cruise 2 is what you want. It's what we have here in this CT4. So if you are specking your next General Motors product and you have the option to equip it with Super Cruise, definitely do so because it's an awesome option and really just simplifies everything. And they've really got this system dialed in. I'm really, really happy with the way that this system performs. And uh, good job, GM, for bringing this to market ahead of a lot of the competitors. I think the system works a bit better than Blue Cruise as well that you get in the Fords. It's pretty much the same thing, but sometimes it makes more abrupt moves that the Super Cruise system, uh, at least under my care here, has not. So great system and I uh, was happy to take you guys along with me here for the ride today in the 23 Cadillac CT4 Premium Luxury with Super Cruise. Make sure you stay tuned, hang out here on Topher Drives. We've got more videos coming. Uh, depending on when I posted this, I've got videos from my California trip on the Toyota GR Corolla, the Porsche 911 Carrera T, and the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS, all of which were unforgettable drives. They were awesome. Make sure you go check those out if you haven't already. More personal car stuff coming down the pipeline as well. So make sure you subscribe if you aren't so you can keep up and hang out with me here on the old YouTube. Cool guys, well that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.